The APC Namaskit Digital Watershed Tour, Chapter 5, Dynamic Equilibrium. River water is much more than just the water that we see on the surface. There are hidden features that can directly impact how you interact with the water. In addition, the ways that rivers flow, namely their path and their velocity, are dynamic, meaning they have a natural tendency to change over time. Healthy rivers experience a phenomenon called dynamic equilibrium, which is a term for how rivers balance two important processes called flow and sedimentation. Flow is the rate at which water moves downstream. The flow rate is determined by two main factors. The first factor is called the cross-sectional area, which refers to the area available to river water to spread out within its channels or the area outside of its channel along adjacent floodplains. The second factor, called velocity, refers to how fast the water is going. You can think of both of these together like water going through a straw. With a wide straw and a small force, you can drop as much liquid as with a narrow straw and a lot of force. The cross-sectional area is dependent on features like the surrounding floodplain. For example, in an area of a wide floodplain, there is more room for the water to spread out. You can think of it like peanut butter spread across a sandwich face. If the peanut butter stays in the center, there is only a small cross-sectional area. If the peanut butter goes all the way to the edge of the bread, there is a larger cross-sectional area. With a larger cross-sectional area, the water can usually slow down a lot more than with a smaller cross-sectional area. Water usually has a familiar flow that it follows through a river system except during storm events when there can be excess water in a system, in a river disconnected from its floodplain by natural vents or man-made structures like dams and levees. This excess water moves across a much smaller cross-sectional area. As a result, the river increases in speed. These faster river flows are erosive. They can corrode and move sediment or even undercut roads and buildings. From this, we can see why it's important to maintain the area over which floodwaters flow to keep water speeds and erosion low and people and property out of harm's way. Sedimentation is the other dimension of dynamic equilibrium and refers to the buildup of sediment like rocks, pebbles, mud, and silt. Sedimentation can happen over the course of days, decades, or even centuries and can have natural or man made causes. One of the most dramatic impacts of sedimentation is the filling in of rivers and lakes over time, which can impact how we're able to use the river's waterways and resources. Sedimentation and stream flow influence one another. When the flow power is greater than what is necessary to transport the sediment load, the channel erodes, becoming larger. When the flow power is less than what is necessary to transport the sediment load, the channel fills in, becoming smaller. The ongoing give and take between sedimentation and river flow is currently happening in the Namaskit River area, particularly in a stretch of channel right below the APC Dam and the impoundment above the Wareham Street Dam. In these areas, water flow decreases so much that sediment accumulates at a very rapid rate. Part of this story relates to the APC Dam structure which disconnects the ponds from surrounding wetlands, which would have previously been a recipient of sediment loads. Another part relates to the Wareham Street Dam and the various man-made structures that have smoothed the topography of the river channel over time, decreasing its flow rates. Sediment continues to be a major issue impacting the Namaskit's navigational capacity and riverine health, though restoration planning efforts currently are underway. Here are a few things you can do to help the Namaskit achieve a stable, dynamic equilibrium. Avoid interrupting the river's access to its floodplain by avoiding new construction and impervious surface in a floodplain wherever possible. Isolating the river from the floodplain makes intense precipitation events much more devastating. When building or otherwise doing construction on your property, have a plan to control sediment. Ensure that the excess soil you create is stored, reused, or disposed of properly. Avoid planting invasive or foreign plants. Plants such as Tatarian honeysuckle and water thyme 
are invasive and very fast-growing species. When they come in and fill out the space of a river, the river velocity can sharply decrease, leading to yet more sedimentation. Try to identify invasive species in your area with applications like plant snap and ensure they never take root. Are you ready to take these steps and become a protector of the APC and the Mascot River watersheds? Learn the facts. Protect our watershed. Protect our community.